as I get older, you know, new, the new year used to be like a really, really big deal for me when I was like younger in my 20s. Like, OK, this is my chance to start all over and everything that I didn't do last year, I'm going to do this year. And without fail, by like February or March, I feel like a failure. <laughs> this is Death, Sex and Money. Don't kill him. I'm not going to kill him. The show from WNYC about the things we think about a lot. I was recently engaged to what turned out to be a hologram. I need to talk about more. I'm a businessman. I love money. I love power. I love capitalism. I'm Anna Sale. Over the holidays, I was at home looking at my phone. And I noticed this tweet from Tracy Clayton, a.k.a. at Brokey McPoverty. There are so many things I want for 2017, and I believe in speaking things into existence, so I'm going to use this thread to do that. Tracy's a writer and the co-host of the BuzzFeed podcast, Another Round, and she went on to list the ways she wanted to change her life in the coming year. It was a long list. I'm really trying to get in shape. I want to travel, like, hide your dad's boyfriends and all your adult sons. I want to get serious about volunteering my time and giving back. I want some real fucking grown-up furniture. She tweeted about money. I want to get my finances in order. About family. I want to finally begin giving back to my mother everything she's given to me over the course of my life. And about love. This is so scary. I don't even like reading this one out loud. (laughs) (laughs) I want to do the hard work of reconciling my past relationships so that I can prep myself for the partner and kids that I'm too scared to admit that I want. I feel like I know a lot about Tracy from her show. She moved to New York from Louisville two years ago. She struggled with anxiety. She loves a stiff drink and bad jokes. But I learned a lot more reading this cascade of tweets, 30 in all. Of course, most of us around New Year's build a list of all the ways we want to transform ourselves. But saying it all out loud, in detail, on Twitter, in front of almost 100,000 followers, I thought that was really brave. Like, typing them out loud was one thing, and now saying them out loud is like, it feels like typing them all over again for the first time. Yeah. Where were you when you just started this this thread of 30 tweets that you were bursting out into the universe about what you wanted for yourself? Um, I had flown home for the holidays. Um, I was at home for about nine days. I was in my mom's living room, and I was just sort of thinking, um, what what would a better me look like? Um, I had a very successful year last year um, as far as my career goes, um, but I still felt sort of... Um, I didn't feel like the rest of my life reflected that same sort of success or happiness. And Mm -hmm. um, I realized that one of the reasons is probably because I don't set goals for myself, like actual real goals. And that's because I'm afraid of like trying to reach them because what happens if I don't reach them and I feel like a failure. There's always the the threat or the the fear for me of failing and failing publicly. So you responded to that by tweeting all this out. (laughs) <laughs> yes. To everyone um, on the internet. To the whole world. Because I really think, uh, so the initial tweet that I sent out was, you know, I believe in speaking things into existence, which um, is actually me trying to speak that belief into existence, right? Because I always love when people are like, you know, I just I just speak it and I claim it and I receive it and I have it. And I'm just like, how the fuck do you do that? Like, how teach me how to do that. So there's the act of naming it and also there's the act of... Um, Some form of accountability, because I'm very used to letting myself down, but I'm much more afraid of letting other people down. You said, I want stability in all areas of my life, financial, Mm -hmm. emotional, home, work. I want significantly less chaos everywhere. Mm -hmm. What was that about? What's the chaos? Um, I feel like I've been in transition for a really long time, and... I mean, I guess that could just be the act of growing up, you know, <laughs> is basically a transition from from one stage of life into another. But as I get older, I'm going to be 35 in April. I feel like there are just things and stuff that are not in place right now. And just like so many places feel like a gray area. You know, my love life has always been a shit show of a gray area. <laughs> um, <laughs> work, um, work is good, but it's still not, I'm still not like doing, I don't, I don't, a lot of this stuff I don't know how to put into words, really. It's just like, I just, I just don't feel like both of my feet are planted firmly on the ground. I feel like my toes are getting there and mm-hmm. maybe the balls of my feet are getting there. Um, And I don't know if that's because I'm getting older and I'm like looking around and I'm seeing people getting like married and they've already got three and four kids and and like savings accounts. Who has a savings account? I don't know. 
your, your tweet about money is like there is a lot in there of your goal about money. Oh you say, I want to get my finances in order. I want a decent credit score for mm-hmm. once in my life. I want to never worry about money again. Mm-hmm. Like, is that possible to never worry about money again? Honestly, I have no idea because when you've never had money, you kind of have to learn how to have it. And I I don't even like have it now. Like I have more access to it and other things, right? And it's it's just so amazing, like the things that I don't know about money. You know, I I know how to hold down a job and I know how to make sure that like, um, you know, the taxes that need to be taken out are taken out. But beyond that, you know, I don't know anything about investing. I don't know anything about making my money work for me as a thing that white dudes in business shirts always say. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? You know, and I really mm-hmm. think that these are things that aren't taught to um, to impoverished people and people of color, especially. And um, I like being surrounded by so many people who don't have these worries. I'm like, OK, now I see for the first time in my life that it's possible to get to a point in a place where that's not like a worry. You know, you can go out and you can buy like a, a two hundred dollar dinner and not have to like take money out of one account to put in the other account to pay for it. Like these are things that I just never knew before. So what's it mean when you think about like getting your finances in order? What's that going to mean? What's concretely what are you doing? Um, I am going to get a tax accountant, um, Mm -hmm. because I mean, my mother is a very smart woman, but if I can have somebody else do my taxes every year, I probably should, you know. Your mom's been doing your taxes? Yes. How sweet. (laughs) (laughs) She's so sweet. She's the best. And I'm sure she's done a great job, but you know. I, I I need to get a, I need to get a grown up account and an account is one of those things where I'm just like oh that's a thing that rich people have or that's a thing that white people have and it doesn't have to be that way you know anybody can get an accountant or a tax accountant so I'm gonna do that um, my credit score is like three <laughs> <laughs> I need to fix that definitely wait is that from like unpaid credit card bills or what happened yeah just being young and in college and my mother bless her heart she had this great plan that she was going to get me a credit card and put it in my name, but then she was going to keep it and like buy stuff that she needed to buy around the house and pay it off to build my credit so that when I was an actual adult, I would have good credit. And she did that, bless her heart, but I'm not good at being an adult and paying bills on time. And I just, I I ruined it. (laughs) I ruined it. And again, like credit is something that like I was never taught about. Like I barely knew what credit was for, how it worked, you know. Um, So I want to get that together. And uh, I'm saving up to take a trip to Puerto Rico by myself, my first solo vacation, which I should have tweeted that, that that's a goal of mine. Um, So saving money and like watching money grow is another thing that I want to be able to do. Um, Do you have a savings account now? I do now. It was the first thing that I did for myself uh, this year. It's, It's step one of trying to achieve or accomplish some of these goals. I now have a savings account. You didn't have one in 2016? I did not. I'm embarrassed to say. I want to ask you about furniture. Okay. <laughs> you you tweeted that all your your uh you said you want to get some real fucking grown up furniture cuz all your mm-hmm. shit is still in storage in Louisville. Mhm. Do you want to move your furniture from Louisville to New York or you do you picture getting new furniture? So the original plan was to move it from Louisville to New York because um I just didn't want to buy a bunch of new furniture but honestly my furniture is shit anyway it's like all ikea furniture and i've just like doled it out to folks at home and the goal is to get actual furniture that is at least the 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 fancier part of ikea furniture uh-huh, exactly. it's not <laughs> <laughs> i remember that i was like no more particle board but i'll still get the things that are made of wood from ikea yes yeah. yes no more lack <laughs> coffee tables for me i'm not going back <laughs> Do you feel like New York is your permanent home or at least no. your permanent home for now? Um, it's it's permanent for now. Um, I recognize that the career gains that I've made and like all of the opportunities that I have and will hopefully come pouring to me in 2017, knock on wood. I've realized and recognized that I couldn't have gotten this in Louisville where I was. Um, I'm learning I'm I'm still like I still can't make my mouth say the words I like living in New York. Mm-hmm. And I I don't know, it's probably just ego and pride honestly. Um but I I'm comfortable and I'm I'm enjoying my time here. Um but this is not my forever home. New York is like being tickled too much, I like to say. You know, of course it's like <laughs> 
it. Stop it. And then it's like, it touched me again. And I swear to God, <laughs> I will murder you. It's just, it's so much stimulation and I need regular breaks. And eventually I would love for the regular breaks that I take to be, to go to some place that's more exciting, you know, instead of like living in the excitement and then having to go someplace else to de-stress. I want to live in a de-stressed place and then just come back to New York to to visit sometime. Yeah. But I think I'll eventually settle back in my old Kentucky home. Coming up, I talk with Tracy about some of her other goals, including the one about wanting to start a family. I definitely want kids, and everybody says that, like, after 35, like, it's like a, just have a funeral for your womb because you can't have kids <laughs> after that. And so I got six months. So <laughs> got to do something pretty soon. <laughs> Tracy's not the only one with feelings about money. After my conversation with former Wall Street executive Sally Krawcheck, a lot of you chimed in. A 31-year-old listener in Panama named Marcella said she was happy to hear Sally acknowledge that women and men face different issues with money. Marcella says she deals with it all the time in her job as a civil engineer. I mean, I have to fight against the gender pay gap, against common social norms such as get married and stop working. So it's good to know that Sally is taking those issues into account. Marcella says she's already putting some of Sally's advice into practice and is tracking her net worth on her own Excel spreadsheet. But for some listeners, like one named Kelly, Sally's advice rubbed them the wrong way. She shames women who are struggling and is reluctant to acknowledge the role of luck and privilege in her own wealth. I could not believe my ears at her defensive comment that nobody worked harder than me. Give me a break. Another response came in from at Dr. Cook Jackson, who tweeted out, Wow, women feel defensive if they've made money. But why? Gotta drop dysfunctional paradigms of money. She followed it with the hashtag pit out. On the next episode, a married mother of two who decided to carry twins for another couple to pay off the expenses from her own child's birth. Having all that debt that I just, when I would think about how much it was and what it would take to pay it off, I would just get so overwhelmed and I would be like, we're never going to be able to get out from under this. And it felt like it was all my fault. And that was why, you know, I started looking at ways that I could pay this off myself. This is Death, Sex, and Money from WNYC. I'm Anna Sale. Tracy Clayton's podcast, Another Round, has been a breakout success since it launched in 2015. It was named Best of iTunes. She and her co-host, Heaven Nagatu, scored an exclusive interview with Hillary Clinton during a pivotal moment in the campaign. By the end of 2016, they were partying with the Obamas at the White House. But outside of work, Tracy says something still felt like it was missing. I want to ask you about what you tweeted about relationships. Oh, boy. I don't have any liquor. <laughs> All I have is water. <laughs> <laughs> you said... Two things you said. I want to. I want to basically like find peace with past relationships, and mm -hmm. and face and to get ready for the partner and kids that I'm afraid to admit that I want. Mm -hmm. So, I want to ask about the second part of that first. Have you admitted out loud that you want a partner and kids? Uh, I. I mean, as of that tweet. That is the only time that it's happened. And I guess when I read it here for you, that's the, the first and only time that I've ever said those words out loud. Actually, when I was at home, my mother and I were watching some, some like eHarmony commercial. And it's the one where they've got like all these different cut scenes of people telling people that they love that they've met somebody. I've met someone. I've met someone. They're like, oh, my God, you met someone. And my mother was like, are you ever going to come to me and tell me you met someone? Oh, and I was mom. I know. First of all, how dare she? Second of all, <laughs> that's just this is just manipulative. Not nice. But my response was, well, wouldn't you rather? <laughs> wouldn't you rather I come to you and say I just made my first million? And she said no. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> damn it. But I mean, you know, the older I get, you know, I've I've got to admit, you know, it, it would be nice to have somebody to sit around and do nothing with. Um, I. I'm not used to, I don't have like a um, a model of like, 
a long lasting, healthy relationship because by the time I was born, my mother never married. Um, my, I have two aunts, one never married and the other was divorced by the time I was born. Um, and my grandmother was divorced. And so I've just, I just never saw like an, an image, like it wasn't a, a, a normal, ordinary thing to just be like, oh yeah, they've been together for X amount of years. I have an uncle that was married for a long time, but, but I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I, you know, I like boys. I would like a boy. <laughs> <laughs> a boy would be cool, but um, I, I don't do very well with um, actually tying up loose ends once those ends become loose. And rather than like filter through and do the hard work of, you know, getting over X, Y, and Z and healing from this experience, I just put it all in the box and I, I shove it in like a corner of my cold, dark, shadowy heart. <laughs> Is that um, like is that heartbreak or is that the hard hard moments when you've had to leave somebody that you felt guilty about? Um, it's both. Um, my last relationship is a very long story, but um, I thought we were gonna like get married, and then I got this job offer to come to New York, and uh, I chose New York, and that was really hard. Mm. And um, I I just never I never dealt with it really, and. I'm pretty good at diagnosing myself. So, like, whenever I meet somebody, I'm like, oh, this is a very nice person, but I'm not ready for a relationship because I've got all these other issues. Like, I can see what's wrong with me. I just won't fix it. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, well. <laughs> and I'm now I'm just like, okay, Trace, if you never, ever, ever fix it and, you know, wade through this uncomfortable-ass box, then, you know, sure, you'll probably be fine. But what if you could be more than fine? What if you could, like, be happy? Wouldn't that be cool? Was it scarier to say that, Admit that you wanted a partner or admit that you wanted kids? A partner, definitely. Huh. Because I, I've known for a long time that, you know, single parenthood is hard, but, I mean, it's not impossible. I was raised by a single mom. She was raised by a single mom. Our president was raised by a single mom. I'm much more comfortable with the idea of raising a kid by myself um, than I am with, like, having to, like, do the work of being in a relationship. Hmm. That's a lot. I was really struck by the way you talked about your physical health. You said, I want to finally take my physical health as seriously as I take my mental health. So mm -hmm. what's, what's that mean? Um, I am very vigilant about, um, about my mental health. Um, I am pretty good, kind of good with like sticking to my meds and, you know, I journal and I try to make sure that my brain is okay because I know that when it's not, then nothing else is okay. Um, and But my body, I, I just don't put the same effort into it. Um, and I, I need to. I actually, I had this great revelation um, a while ago when I was really, really down on myself uh, because I've been gaining weight. I've been gaining weight for like the last 10 years. And, uh, you know, I always do the thing where I'm like, no, this time I'm going to join the gym. I'm going to cook every day. And I never, ever, ever do. Um, and I was laying in bed one day and I was, I just got tired of feeling bad about the way that I looked and about my body. And I said to myself, you know, I have a good body. It's not perfect. It's not, you know, it's not, it doesn't look like all of my favorite superstars, you know, but it's, it's a good body. It's, it's healthy. And that's, important and that's enough and you should celebrate that and it really like kind of changed something in me and it made me feel more okay with um the way that it looks you know like mm. it, by appreciating the way that it functions and the things that it does for me it made me appreciate the way that it looks but <laughs> it also made me feel better about just ordering seamless every night and sitting down <laughs> and not even trying to work out because i'm like you know what i got a good body it's still a good body if i eat this pizza <laughs> Um, but I do recognize, um, especially as I get older and, you know, I'm starting to see family members, um, starting to see their health decline. You know, I, my body is only good if I'm good to it, you know, it can peter out at any moment and there's still so much that I want to do and get done. And to do that, you know, I gotta, I have to be like, yeah, you have a good body, but you know, it can, it can last a lot longer if you're better to it. And so it's about taking care of your body, but you also mentioned that you you want your you want to get in shape and have a mm -hmm. body where, mm -hmm. where you got to hide your dads, hide yes. your boyfriends and adult sons. <laughs> yes. I really want because okay, if I can speak candidly, you know, just you and I, I think I've got like a really really good shape 
you know, and if I just like worked out and like did a did a damn sit up sometime, like I could I could just really like I I want for like a month of my life to just be like in body con dresses and like ridiculous heels that I can't walk in and, you know, just like the the super glamorous, like sexy uh, for nobody but myself. And once that happens, then I want to be, you know, just like settle into like back into my I've got a good body and it's fine. <laughs> but I feel like I spent so much of my of my youth hating my young body. And when I look back at pictures of myself from like 10 years ago, I get so mad at that girl in those pictures because I'm just like, you spent all this time thinking you were fat. Mm. And uh, I just want to like just throttle her and just be like, listen, you are fine as fuck. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So I think it really does come from just wanting to have a second chance to appreciate myself in ways that I hadn't before. I think because I mean, at when I thought I was really, really fat, I was like 150 pounds maybe. And uh, I feel like if I were to hit 150 again, I would I would feel perfect. I would feel flawless as opposed to back when I was 150, just feeling like a slot, you know, just like not enjoying it and not being present. I just I want I want to do over. When you say you want to get back to 150, what does that mean? How much does that mean you have to lose? You're asking yourself to lose. I am now 186. Can't do math. <laughs> Maybe you can edit that in. Um, but um, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's been very interesting watching my weight loss goal go from like 10 pounds to 15 pounds to 20 pounds. It's been very, very interesting. Yeah. You tweeted about your family in a couple of interesting ways. One way is you said, when I go home to Louisville, I want to be my whole self and I want to stop compartmentalizing. Mm -hmm. Like what are the parts of yourself that you leave out when you go home now? Um, well, I got drunk with my family on Christmas Day for the first time ever in my life. So that's a part. Not that I not that I'm always drunk. I'm not always <laughs> drunk. But you know, I, I enjoy an occasional adult beverage and I know that um like there was one Thanksgiving or something where I was at home and I uh, was challenging my brother to, like, uh, some kind of game. And I was like, all right, we're going to do, like, shot for shot. Let's go. And everybody was like, oh, my gosh, Tracy can't drink a shot. And I'm just like, in my head, I'm like, if you knew <laughs> how I drink at home, you know, and it's very stressful to have to to limit any part of myself when I'm around my family. That surprises me that, like, when, I want to go home and I want to drink more in front of my family. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprising answer. <laughs> but I hear what you're saying, especially, like, as, like, an accomplished young woman, I get, like, you wanted to show them that you were, like, you got things on lockdown and you're responsible and you're going yeah. to get things done. And so being someone who knows how to let loose or just, you know, relax, I don't think that's yeah. something that, like, talented young women are taught or, like, yeah, know how to do. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I think also, I mean, I'm the youngest of my mom's kids, so in my in my head, a lot of people still think that I'm, like, a 15-year-old child mm -hmm. um and you know when i was younger i i was super shy i didn't do anything like risque i didn't start drinking even until i was like 25 26 um, really yeah yeah i was very oh my gosh bookish and terrified to open my mouth to anybody so i, I think it's just giving myself permission to be a grown-ass woman around my family has been really really big you also said you wanted to figure out how to give back to to your mother for all that she's given to you. Yes. I just bought her a bed for Christmas and it made me feel I I can't think of a better feeling. Um, to just be able to give her something that she needs or wants, you know, and just be like, you know what, don't worry about it. It's on me, I got it. Because oh my gosh, she just she just makes me so emotional. <laughs> Just she she just gives and she gives and she gives and she gives. And when I think about my earliest examples of feminism, you know, it was her. And it's not because she was reading Audre Lorde and Toni Morrison. It's because she was out working to take care of me and my brother and her mother, you know. And those are those are things that I know that, like, I can't ever repay with money. But I'm so excited to try. Have you been sending money home? Yeah. Um, I've been trying to learn how to do it because I'm... I'm always like, uh, okay, just tell me how much you need and I'll send it. And when I do that, I don't take into account how it can make my family feel. Um, mm -hmm. 
And uh, pride is a big thing. It's a big deal. I can't imagine what it feels like to um, have this person that you've been taking care of forever who now wants you to chill out and let them take care of you. I'm sure it's not easy. Um, but we're we're figuring it out. We're We're working on it. Now that we're into January, 2017 has started. Is there anything you wish you hadn't tweeted that you hadn't said out loud about what you wanted for this year? Oh, man, that's a great question. Um, Tweeting the one about, like, the relationship stuff makes me uncomfortable to think about because I'm I'm, I'm just not good with that sort of thing. But I don't I don't regret tweeting it because I really I really think that it's step one in getting all that stuff together. Um, So I don't I don't regret anything that I tweeted. Um, That's the one that feels the most tender. Yes, it is. I'm really excited for your 2017. Thank you. Me too. Yeah. I'm also excited for your 2017. That sounded very <laughs> selfish of me. <laughs> That's Tracy Clayton. She's a writer and host of the BuzzFeed podcast, Another Round. Death, Sex, and Money is a listener-supported production of WNYC Studios in New York. I'm based at the Center for Investigative Reporting in Emeryville, California. Our team includes Katie Bishop, Chester Jesus Soria, Emily Botine, and Andrew Dunn. The Reverend John Delore and Steve Lewis wrote our theme music. I'm on Twitter at Anna Sale. The show is at Death, Sex, Money. And here's one more thing you can accomplish in 2017. Write a review for Death, Sex, and Money in iTunes. While you're there, check out another round if you haven't. Tracy and her co-host, Heaven Nagatu, get incredible guests on the show, and they are hilarious. There's drinking, there's lots of jokes, and Tracy's Animal Corner. She's got a thing for animals, so much so that she included them in her list of 2017 goals. I want to meet a chicken and a parrot and a baby elephant and finally meet a penguin. That might be the thing that I want most in this whole list, honestly. I'm Anna Sale, and this is Death, Sex, and Money from WNYC. 